Hey streamers, I'm Vox here to make tech easier and more fun, and in this video we'll be covering Elgato's latest update to their 4K capture utility, which finally introduces live commentary, how to set it up and use it, and how to import that and manage it in your video editing software. We're going to get started right after this. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. If you haven't already, of course, go ahead and update your 4K capture utility software. There should be an auto pop-up that appears when you launch the software asking you to update. Otherwise, download the installer from Elgato's website. Once you have updated, of course, it will look mostly the same. Head on over to your settings cog. Make sure all of your normal settings have stayed the same or are good after the update. Sometimes that resets stuff. Head on over to the new mic tab. And here you have the option, quite a few options, but firstly, the option to choose which microphone you're actually running with. And the default may not be right. I just plugged in a new webcam, and so it's defaulting to that. But I'm going to choose the input for me, which is coming from my USB multi-track mixer right here. Yours may be a mic in on your motherboard or a USB device or something. You should know what it is. I'm going to click one, two. That's my input. And then you're presented with a real-time monitor audio level and an input gain. So mine is a USB audio device where I'm maintaining the gain on the mixer itself. So I do not want to, you know, adjust the gain any further from here. However, if you're using a headset microphone, something analog, or a, a USB microphone like a blue snowball or something where you don't have, you know, on hardware gain controls, then you might actually want to use this and balance it out. You don't want it to be peaking. So if I start yelling, pa 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 pa. You can see it gets, you know, in the red there. You don't want that to happen. But for me, this is talking at fairly normal volume, and those volume levels are pretty good. You want it, you know, in this range, not too close to the far right, and you want your loudest point to never peak in the red. Always safer to just go with, like, 98, if nothing else. Now, you have two checkboxes here. One is mono down mix. This is for USB audio interfaces, like the Focusrite 2i2 or the Behringer UMC22 or 204HD or my multi-track mixer, where my microphone is only actually coming in on the left-hand side. And so if I just recorded it as is, everybody's right ears would be pretty lonely. This puts your microphone on both left and right channels and is very important for most workflows. In general, microphones, even if they come into Windows as stereo, microphones are mono devices. You're recording into one capsule with one mouth. So it's pretty much always safe to check that if you don't know for certain. But, you know, otherwise choose it based on your hardware. And then monitor audio will actually loop your microphone back to you through your system speakers. And in most cases, you don't really want this. But if you have someone else on the streaming PC kind of monitoring the levels, you might want them to be able to hear it. So if I enable it here as I start talking, it can loop through, but that's, that's going. going <laughs> but that's, that's going, going to come, come through, through with your, your game sound. sound monitoring here in the settings down below, not on its own. But I'm gonna turn that off because that's obnoxious. And that's pretty much it for microphone settings in the 4K capture utility settings. And then you just come down here and turn on your microphone when you're ready for it to record. You can see here that it's only on the left-hand channel, which is why I need that mono down mix which should resolve that it's recording into both the flashback recording and if i just start a new recording altogether so i'm gonna record a little gameplay thing here all right ladies and gentlemen we're coming in here live with some halo 3 i immediately pick up the sniper turn around and start going for some kills i really want to get some kills early on in this match dodging some grenades looking around and i almost get nope totally missed the no scope that no scope looked like it connected, but it didn't. And the hate or the the melee beat down. Oh man, I've not played a whole lot of cold storage, honestly. I've put most of my time into it in the Halo CE version, even though it was a free DLC for Halo 3. I still I ended up not playing it a ton back in the Halo 3 days. Looking around for people, they are actually up above me. Still missing the no scopes. I am super rusty here in this video. And I'm gonna stop recording right about now now I have stopped the main recording so if I go into my library here 
and go down to we have today. Something to note with your library. If you see videos that don't have an actual preview, they just have the Elgato logo more often than not. Those are just files that are in that folder because it will actually load other files, but that's fine. And uh, uh, by the way, the 4K Capture Utilities Library tab now has a ton of different smart folders and short sorting options and all sorts of stuff. And so there's actually one which highlights when live commentary is present on a video, which is pretty cool. So we just have generic migrate game capture here. I didn't really sort it or anything. You can right click it, open with default player, open with file explorer, open project file, open with media info. You have a lot of stuff here. If I go to open project file, I don't think that's going to do anything. If I open a file explorer, we can see we have the MP4 itself along with the M4A live commentary audio and a copy of the game audio separated as well, which is pretty cool. So if we go ahead and pop that up in the player here, in 4K experience with it is actually on uh, Halo Combat Evolved, not Ooh. almost got the no scope there. That is something that you will run into using this method if you specifically prefer to have Elgato handle your recording and things like that versus OBS instead of having it as actual multiple different tracks in one video file you have a separate video file and separate audio file and you can actually see here the audio file is six seconds longer than the video file which will mean you have to do a little bit of work to sync it up unfortunately that's just the downside of handling it this way but Here's the information available to you regardless. All right, I'm coming back in here because my original round of this got totally messed up and I'm re-recording a lot of this. So when I showed opening the project file doing nothing, that is this AAF file along with this .json metadata file. Inside the actual recording folders, you're given the original video file itself, which has the video feed. I can play it back here for a second. And a copy of the game audio. And then you're given a second copy of the game audio as an AAC M4A file, as well as a live commentary track here as well. And then you can use this AAF file to import them already synced up. In most cases, my original test run, this was not the case, but in most cases you will import this and it will actually sync it up. So I'm going to show you that real quick here. I'm going to open up Adobe Premiere Pro, and this is the same in most professional-ish video editors that support this format. Go to File, Import, and then come down here and find that .aaf file. Click open. And then it's going to import everything and it's actually going to make a folder. It's going to make its own bin or folder. And in that bin or folder, you're going to have a sequence that has all of this stuff already lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Now the sequence is set for 1080p. It apparently doesn't adapt to uh, your resolution that you recorded at. So you got to like shrink your video footage down or change that and then you have track one is your game audio and track two is your live commentary audio and if you zoom in here uh, I don't know if there's any obvious signs of it here yeah you can see here these are not the same length or anything and that is because they are actually specifically synced up based on your record point like I said my original recording of this this was not the case but I believe that's because I had OBS running at the same time and so you can see here you have your game audio on one track that you can then lower the volume for so I'll turn that down real low and then your live commentary here and then you can apply audio editing or things like that to your live commentary track if desired as well. So then if I play it back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming in here live with some Halo 3. I immediately pick up the sniper, turn around and start going for some kills. I really want to get some kills early on in this match. And then if I just mute out my live commentary and say turn up the game sound, you can hear that that's also intact. And it's all synced up and you're ready to go. So then you can either nest this as a new sequence within a sequence and then just edit based on this. Or you can manually try to trim based on, you know, I can cut off the end here and have it end right there. Pretty cool stuff. And I'm glad that they have included this. A couple of suggestions for the future is I would like to see them make the sequence size based on the resolution you're recording at. And also, if I come in here. What they have done with the video file is that they bring it in as just a video in the first place. And so your audio is actually only a mono track, which is really not good. If I drag in the original MP4 recording that it uses, you can see here it's actually a stereo recording. So I don't know why they've ch chosen to do this unless that's just like an unintended feature. And it may be doing this based on the down mix to mono thing, but I actually had that unchecked when I recorded this. But it also did my uh, microphone as a mono clip as well. So maybe that 
functionality just isn't working properly because you can see here I go to my audio and it's set to that. So I'm going to record another one real fast and see if that's still the case, but I don't really expect much. All right, so I'm importing another test recording I just did just since I don't know that I restarted the app after unchecking down mix to mono. Yep, even with restarting the app after unchecking it, the gameplay volume here is still only mono. So that's my only real feedback here. And the same thing with the microphone. Like, that seems to just kind of be ignored, I guess. Uh, really weird. Uh, but with the way that they have it introduced, there's no way to manage the clip attributes or, like, bring the volume back without just re-importing the game MP4 and syncing it back up. So... That's all I really got to offer here. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education. Let me know how you're going to use this live commentary feature. And if you prefer using the native app, like the 4K Capture Utility, versus using OBS Studio and why. I'm Apple Sox, here to make tech easier and more fun. And I'll see you in the next one.